Hello, and welcome to Noida Tips and Tricks Volume 2. The game has been out for about six months now, and so I've compiled another large list of features and techniques to help you conquer this sometimes harsh and brutal game. Keep in mind that it's still in early access and very active development, so all of this is subject to change. In fact, some of the things in my older videos have already been changed, such as getting these guys to heal you by being berserk or just kicking them. You can still get heals from them, however, by spraying them with pheromone. If you don't have pheromone, just stand between two of them, occasionally kicking each of them so that they heal you while attempting to heal one another. Having the Plague Rats perk also has the added benefit of switching you from a player to a creature faction, making healers heal you on sight. These guys are also healers, however, Pheromone does not work on them because they are machines. The Plague Rats perk, however, does work. A very effective early game weapon is not a wand at all, but one of the tablets. Not only do they inflict great damage, but killing enemies with one often counts as a physics kill, meaning they'll drop double gold on death. An added benefit is that tablets make great explosion shields. In the first tips video, I showed how a tentacle can be used to steal other spells from holy mountains. Well, the Circle of Buoyancy spell can be used in a similar fashion, though it is admittedly a little bit tricky to use. Eventually, once you manage to move the spells out of the Holy Mountain, you may pick them up free of charge. Speaking of Holy Mountains, this area right here triggers the Collapse. So, you can teleport through it without triggering it. That way, if you want to edit wands without the Edit Wands Everywhere perk, you can re-enter Holy Mountains in the same way in order to do so. Or, you could also just use Teleportadium. Stavari can be a huge pain for most players, until you realize that he shares the same weakness as most enemies. Cold Temperature You can right-click flasks in your inventory to immediately drink them, giving yourself 10 seconds of the flask's effect without worrying about it washing off. This effect will stack for each flask of the same type that you drink, which then allows you to do things like this. Speaking of drinking, you can get rid of very dangerous liquids by crouching next to them and carefully quaffing their contents, without any ill effects at all. Since polymorphine no longer extends levitation duration, an easy way of getting over the cliff is to use a firebolt spell, which is a fairly common find in the mines. Another easy method is to use some teleportadium, which will attempt to teleport you in a location in the direction of your cursor. If you manage to turn the world to gold and survive, you might wonder how you can end your game. While it's true that you can just start a new game at this point and it would still count your victory, if you really want to see your stats on the end screen, you can simply make your way to the world borders. The Cursed Rock aura will still remain and is a dependable way to kill yourself in this situation. The puzzle rooms are one of the coolest new additions, and while you can simply dig through them with black holes, luminous drills, or etc., solving them the intended way is more satisfying. So what is the intended way of opening each one? For this one in the snowy depths, the answer is electricity. The easiest way is to just use water to spread the electric current from the small box over to the puzzle room. Soon, the oil at the bottom should ignite, burning the wood supports and dropping the stone block, allowing you access. For this one, you simply want to shoot something capable of burning or breaking wood through this narrow hole, which will then allow you to access the room. Finally, for this one, we have gunpowder piled under the entrance block, with a narrow tunnel leading to it. We just want to pour something like lava down the tunnel in order to gain access. Alternatively, a fire spell can be shot down the tunnel in order to ignite the gunpowder and access the treasure. 
If you manage to complete a stage without killing anything, the game actually rewards you with a chest in the following holy mountain. The chests can contain anything from gold to flasks to wands, giving you some incentive to play the game in a peaceful fashion. Freeze Charge plus Tentacle is an extremely powerful combination, capable of one-shotting most enemies. Modifying Luminous Drills with Ping Pong Path also creates a very nice death wand, except this one can also be used for digging. Slap three of them and a triple scatter spell on a wand and things start to get interesting. Now, just stack on some damage and crit, and you have yourself a wand that will instantly kill most things, including your frame rate. Thanks to the Forgiven for first telling me about this. The Piercing Shot modifier is the most powerful modifier in the game. You can use it in conjunction with a boomerang and heal projectile to create an extremely effective self-healing wand. This next build comes to us courtesy of my friend Alias Gaming on YouTube, Alias Bot on Twitch. Go and check him out, he's making videos focused on advanced Noida wand crafting. The Reduced Lifetime modifier can be used to make casts permanent or infinite. Different spells require different amounts of these modifiers in order to achieve this effect, so experiment with multiple reduced lifetimes and various spells in order to discover how many reduced lifetimes are needed to make each spell infinite. Anyway, here's one of the most basic setups. We use Piercing Shot to hit each target multiple times, Boomerang so that the spell follows us around, Reduce Lifetime to make the spell infinite, Homing I like to use too so the spell seeks out targets, a modifier like Drilling Shot so the spell can move through barriers, as much damage and crit as you can fit, and I'm just going to make Spark Bolt with Trigger infinite, but you can have this trigger another spell for even more insane damage. As you can see, it sometimes takes a little while before one successfully casts, but eventually we get one. Burst of Air is another spell that only requires one reduced lifetime to be made infinite. And there we go. Just this simple setup is capable of killing anything in New Game very quickly. You can make it a lot crazier than this though, so definitely do experiment. However, be careful with making certain spells infinite. And also, of course, always be very careful around any polymorphine. However, if you can't find any of this, but happen to have a flask of acid, Sometimes that's all you need. Anyway, I'm Fury. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.